so we're out here this morning um, in the beautiful Tennessee River Gorge trying to see if we can capture a belted kingfisher. We've been given permission by the U.S. Bird Banning Laboratory to start a pilot project to take a look at this bird, the full life cycle of this bird, looking at its its day-to-day -day activities. Where does it go? How does it migrate? Uh, how far does it migrate? Does it come back to the same place? This is a common bird that is in a, a slow but steady decline and we want to understand why it's declining and the best way to do that is to understand its full life cycle. All right, so we came out here early this morning before sunrise to try to capture a belted kingfisher to deploy a GPS tracking unit and got everything set up, good timing. We heard the bird, the sun hadn't come up yet, and it happened so fast I was still parking the boat, so I didn't even see what happened. Angie, what <laughs> happened? Well, the bird pretty much hit the net right away. Um, it came in for the decoy, so it noticed that there was another male bird in the, its environment, which was a fake bird but it came in right for that decoy, trying to defend its territory. And we had to run and try to get Elliot to let him know that the bird was in the net. And then we were able to process the bird. When we process a bird, we use unique metal leg bands that are issued to us from the USGS. And each of these metal leg bands has a unique number on it. And we can use this number to identify this individual bird and anyone in the world can actually use this number to know where this bird came from and where it was banded. The next thing we do is we put a color leg band on the bird and this is um, a unique uh, process that we're doing with this study. Many researchers use color leg bands um, to identify individuals within their studies. We use a unique combination of colors to help us track individual male and female kingfishers um, in our study throughout the river gorge so we know who exactly we're looking at. When we process a bird we use these uh, cotton cloth bird bags uh, researchers have found one of the most humane ways to hold birds while you're banding them because it helps them calm down. Um, it's kind of like blinders on a horse. They can't see what's going on around them, so it helps them stay relaxed. We also weigh the bird. Uh, this helps us tell its mass, and we use this for a number of different things. Researchers can use this data um, to tell a lot of different things about a bird, how healthy it is, how big it is, um, we can use it to determine its body mass index and if there are any changes in its weight over time. So as we study these individual kingfishers um, in their full life cycle, we can weigh them again and see if the weight has changed over time. The weight also might differ de depending on how much the kingfisher has been eating that day or if it has an egg and if it's oviduct, if it's a female. Um, and it can also differ depending on the time of year. So if the kingfisher um, is in a time of year where it's eating a lot and putting on a lot of fat, like if it's about to do a local migration, it may also weigh more then. Another step in bird banding um, is to blow um, on the um, abdomen of the bird or um, also you can push the feathers apart with your fingers. In the case of the belted kingfishers, they have some pretty thick feather tracks. Um, that big um, blue band you see on them is actually really thick, so sometimes you have to push it apart with your fingers. What we do when we're um, blowing on the feathers, we're looking for a number of different things. We're looking at the um, kingfisher's lower abdomen, we're looking for the a brood patch, and we can use the presence or absence of this brood patch to determine if the bird is a male or female in the case of birds that um, are not sexually dimorphic. Um, that means they don't have um, different color feathers like the belted kingfishers do. 
Um, and we're also looking for, on males, a cloacal protuberance, which is basically a fancy term for um, the male's sexual organ. By removing feathers out of the way, researchers can get a glimpse into the furcula hollow of the bird. This is an area where fat deposits can be visibly seen. And with proper training, a fat score can be attributed to each individual bird based on the fat deposits in this hollow. These fat deposits can give us an indication of the bird's body condition and if it's acquiring the proper nutrients it needs to survive. When we band the kingfishers, uh, we use a special wing ruler um, that's actually specially cr uh, crafted for bird banders to measure how long its wing is from kind of the the shoulder of its wing to the tip of its um, flight feathers or the, the scientific bird term for that would be the primaries. Um, it's important for scientists to measure the wing. Uh, we call it the wing cord um, because it helps us look at um, the condition of the wings and also it helps us determine body mass index of the bird. Bird species grow new feathers throughout their life and this process is referred to as molting. These growth patterns and the feathers appearance can help us determine the age of the birds. A molt limit describes a location between feather tracks where two generations of feathers are side by side. This is a key piece of information when determining the age of a bird. With this study, we are applying GPS transmitters to the back of the bird. This technique isn't entirely new, but this type of transmitter has never, in our knowledge, been applied to a belted kingfisher before. We used um, previous studies on similar sized birds and we talked to lots of other researchers who had applied these transmitters before to other birds that were of similar shape and size, and we determined that the leg loop harness um, was the best uh, type of harness for our bird. We've also done a lot of uh, research using leg loop harnesses in the past um, as a land trust, so we felt confident using uh, this procedure. So we are equipping these kingfishers with a GPS tracking unit, and the tracking unit actually transmits a signal to a satellite, which then transmits a signal back to Earth, and we can retrieve the data. These units are unique in the fact that it's live data given back to the researcher without the researcher having to go into the field and recapture the unit. A lot of times, usually because of weight restrictions, tracking units are so small they can't transmit a signal back to the researcher. In this case, once we put the backpack on the bird and let it go, we can get on our computers and see that bird's location. When the GPS unit connects to the satellite, we can see its movements pre-breeding, during the breeding season, and then what it does when breeding is over and it's finished raising its young, which is one of the mysteries surrounding the belted kingfisher species. We're not quite sure if they disperse after the breeding season, if they do a small-scale migration, or if they stay in the same site throughout the year. Kingfisher habitat, first and foremost, entails water. They feed on aquatic organisms in creeks, rivers, lakes, and wetlands, so wherever there's water, you'll usually find kingfishers. They do need water that is sufficient quality to have these organisms, though. For nesting habitat, they look for steep dirt or muddy embankments on the sides of the streams or lake. They need it to be 8 to 15 feet tall to avoid predation on the nest, and they look for really steep slopes leading into the into the river bank and they make these perfect circles that a kingfisher can barely fit into and if you're out on the river looking for these look for two grooves on the bottom of the hole and the grooves are actually made by the legs of the adult birds as they excavate the nest as well as when they're going in and out of it to deal with the nestlings and young. The reason we're tracking these birds is because although they are a common species their annual movements are relatively unknown by the scientific community and although they're common now, they might not always be common, so it's part of this movement to keep common birds common, if you will. And if something were to ever happen that compromised belted kingfishers, we would want to understand the bird's annual movements, what they do, their habitat needs, their ranges. So this is the first step in starting to uncover this information on a mysterious yet common species you see every day.